Welcome back to the Bookends YouTube channel. I'm James McGowan. I'm Jessica Faust. And we are literary agents who have taken our popular blog to the YouTube channel, discussing everything in publishing. Everything. Everything. Today we are talking, uh, we got a great viewer question that said she has done all the research. She has found this list of agents. She has queried them. But how does she know that they are reputable? Yeah, right, right. She knows what genre she's done done all of the stuff we've talked about in other videos, but the biggest concern, understandably, is how do you know the agents you picked to query are? And it's a great question. I, yeah. I, I think that it's, it's, a, it's phrased in a way that we've never really like come at it before. The fact that you can do all this research, but there's always going to be something that you might not know or you might not be able to find. Yeah, and I think that, um, you know, there are resources you can and should go to. And I think we'll start by mentioning those because you can do some of this research while querying, but um, the bulk of what we're gonna talk about is really sort of after the offers from agents come in. Right. Um, so the first resource is Query Tracker, um, which I love. And it's where authors will oftentimes comment about their experience with agents. Um, and I think luckily we've reached a time where people are more open about their experiences with agents. So that's really great place. Um, writers organizations, whether it's in the genre you write or not, you know, you don't need to be writing straight mystery or romance to be a part of those organizations. You know, you could still join them. And I think the organizations will give information, but also more importantly is probably connecting with other writers through chapters and other private settings where people are willing to be open and honest about not just their experiences, but about what they hear about certain agents. Yeah, they give community, which is, important when you are doing anything in an industry that's based on a relationship. Yeah. And then writers beware, which um, is a fabulous resource. Um, they have spent years um, taking information from writers and really sort of putting out their um, concerns that might be seen about agents. I think there are some obvious red flags, um, like they charge upfront fees. Um, they charge, well, they charge you anything. You know, agents make their money when they sell a book. Agents make their money when you make money. Right. So if an agent is at any point asking you to write a check, walk away. That's yes. pretty simple. But I think this, re this viewer was asking very specifically, they've sort of, they know that. They're just asking sort of, how can you figure out the agent that might look on the surface reputable, but not be? Yeah, I mean, just in the past year alone, there have been so many, you know, controversies. And that's something that every author, naturally has every author on edge about. Yeah. Um, so sort of how can you avoid that in any way right. possible? Um, yeah. I, and I think what you were saying is probably your first step. You have done all the query research, but going that one extra mile to invest yourself in a community and to sort of find anything that might be on the publishing side of the information well, right? Because there's a very public information, the websites and, and stuff like that, but then you can go a little deeper into all the publishing um, communities, basically. Yeah. And what I would say is that I don't think you have to unduly worry about it until offers of representation come in. I mean, it's not going to hurt you to query any of these unreputable agents um, or find out later that they're, that they're disreputable and you've queried them. That's not gonna hurt you. So don't sort of go down that rabbit hole quite yet. You've done this basic research, you know they're good agents or seemingly good agents at good agencies. So query, when the offers come in is when I think you do the real deep dive. But I think too, remembering that you are not as powerless in queries as it might seem you are. So there are two things that are always at your disposal that you can use if any information makes it your way that you're uncomfortable with. You can withdraw a query or submission mm -hmm. and you can turn down an offer of representation. Mm -hmm. Those are yes. the two things to know. That's your out, always. Always, always. So 
Before we go into our five tips to knowing, um, I want to mention Publishers Marketplace. Now, yeah. Publishers Marketplace is a paid for service. Um, and it's where a lot of deals get reported, but not all. So you're not going to see everything that publishing is doing. I think that because it does cost something, I believe you can pay by the month. So it is possible that when you start getting off, when you get that first offer of representation, log in there, pay whatever it is, $20, $25. And then you can do sort of the deep dive in there and find out, do these agents really have verified sales? And if, you know, and then you can cancel your membership after that and not have paid money that maybe you can't afford right now. So it can be a quick one-off thing. Yeah, that's a great way to do it. And also check and see if that agent has um, their deals on their agency website, if they have a personal website, because that's a lot of a lot of agents are cropping one up right now where they don't have their yeah. own website. Um, is it listed there? Um, and a lot of agents will post their deals on social media. So just following them could help you do that along the way. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So um, when you get an offer of representation, this is when I think you really start to know. Um, and we've talked a lot about um, what to do with an offer, how to handle it, um, how to handle multiple offers and get yourself multiple offers. So there are a ton of videos and blog posts on that. It's not what we're going to talk about here. We're going to talk about how to identify the reputable agent once you get an offer. So we have five warning signs. Mm -hmm. um, number one, does the agent rush you for an answer or for setting a timeline rather than allowing you to set the timeline? Right. So when you get an offer of representation, you are in control, which means you have every right. And we encourage you to say, um, I'd like two weeks to make a decision so you can talk to all possible agents. I tend to think two weeks is a good mark. Um, you can set whatever you want. You can set six weeks. You can set six months if you want. It's up to you. Um, it's just that Two weeks seems to be sort of the point where it gives you enough time to talk to everyone. It gives everybody enough time to read. And at some point I realize you just want to get moving. Right. You know? My best tip is to set the agents for maybe a couple of days before that. And this way you have a couple of days built yes. in for making your decision. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you want to make a decision by the 15th, tell all agents that you want to hear from them by the 12th. But this is the this is every reason why an agent shouldn't make that timeline for you. You should make that timeline. We don't know whether you have jobs. We don't know how many queries you have out there. You have other things you have to do in the meantime. You're going on vacation. Any of that can happen. So you should be able to be the one to set that timeline, alert all of the other agents, and have the time you need to make an informed and proper decision. Yeah. So if an agent makes an offer of representation and basically says, you know, I want an answer in 24 hours or you know, even three days, or I'll give you till the weekend. That's a red flag. I mean, frankly, I'm in no rush. You know, I mean, we It'll are be my job in two weeks. <laughs> right. The book will still be a great book in two weeks. Yeah. You know, I'll still be able to submit it in two weeks. None of that is going to change. The only thing that might be different is I may have died of anxiety, but that's not your problem. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that is a really good point. Yeah. Yes, yes. The constant obsessing over every email and totally. potential phone call. Yeah. yeah, You know, you authors think you're the only ones that do it. Mm -mm. <laughs> oh. No, it's, um, that is very true. But yes, you should set the timeline. Any agent who does it, um, in my mind, is questionable. They clearly don't want the competition and there should be a reason why. So that should be our warning flag which competition is this industry. So if they don't want competition, I'm confused. I mean, I don't want competition, but- No, but I'm capable of it. <laughs> Just saying. I know, and I, I can handle it. Yeah, that's what yeah, I meant. Yeah, yeah we can do it. <laughs> um, okay, number two, does the agent have editorial feedback that aligns with yours? Basically, do they have, they have read the book? <laughs> yeah, have they read the book? That's exactly it. So we've talked about vision and that is another video. We are just throwing the other videos around. We really are. Yeah. That's another video, but you know, there has been sort of a history of agents who don't seem to be reading the books. Can you have a real conversation? Do they just say, no, the book is great. 
that to me is a bit of a red flag. Well, have you read it? They're not going to, you know, if, if, if they're going to offer without reading the book, they may not answer. No, I haven't read it, but it's your book. You can tell if somebody's read it or not. You can no, have I a real say, conversation. There have been a couple books, especially picture books. So I've been like, this is perfect. Like I wouldn't change much, but I am able to speak ad nauseum <laughs> about everything in the book. Yes, exactly. And and I think that most authors have questions about things in their book. They might say, well, how did you feel about this scene? Or what did you think of this character? It often comes from a place of either somebody else mentioned something or you have your own concerns. This would be a great time to have that conversation. If they can't answer those questions, they may not have a perfect answer. Sometimes we need to reread because that was not something that jumped out at us but they should at least know who the character of the scene is and be able to talk about it to some degree. Yeah. So, oh, I, that I mean, was the yawn. No, that wasn't a yawn. That was a heavy sigh <laughs> because it just, it's frustrating that that might happen. Um, okay. So number three, how does the agent respond when asked about submission and negotiation strategy? Very important. Yeah. This is, this is the job of the agent. So. Yeah. I recently said to an author, we, we, we got an offer and the author said to me, I'm very happy with the offer. I'm okay. Accepting. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Do not take my fun away. <laughs> <laughs> that is the fun part. Um, and there, there is always room for negotiation. That's something always to, right. So always, it's very concerning to me if an agent doesn't negotiate. I have, you know, I can negotiate the heck out of something and maintain a really good relationship with a publisher. And an agent who is afraid to negotiate is usually afraid that they can't get more deals. And that is not an agent you want. No, but also, <laughs> <Your face. laughs> I know, not at all. Um, but also, that's our job. Like, the publisher, the editor, whoever we're negotiating with, is supposed to hate us, not you. Yeah. Uh, so let us do that. Yeah. Because yeah. we and want also, the best deal. Our job is to earn our 15%, not take it from what you're yeah. getting. It's to earn it. This is how we earn it. Um, so that's negotiation. But I also want to talk about submission strategy because there's a lot about submission strategy lately um, in terms of my book only went to eight editors and then we moved on to something new or that's a question to ask up front. Like, yeah. what is it like when submitting? Do you submit in rounds? Do you submit 10? Wait to hear back from all 10? Submit another 10? Do you submit uh, rolling? Like you send one out as one comes? Like, those are questions you want to know. Do Will I see go? all of that? Yes. What kind of, you know, do I get to see all the submissions? Do I get to see the responses? Also, do you consider small, smaller publishers? Some agents will only do the big five and they don't want to do smaller. I don't, I think the biggest thing about this is, is the communication. I think this is a tricky one because you want an agent to negotiate. Obviously you want good communication during the submission process and you want the submission process to feel good to you. You might not have a, a you know, pre-planned thought of what it should be, but when the agent talks, you should feel good about it. I think the tricky thing with this is you're picking up on nuances in the conversation because this is one of those situations where I think everybody's gonna tell you they communicate and they do this and they do that. And where you find out that the agent's not working for you is that they might not be doing what they've promised. So, but, but that doesn't mean picking up on these nuances and, and feeling your gut about them isn't important. Right, and um, I think a lot, there's a lot to be said just about having willingness to have that conversation. Yeah, and I, I think it, it's even fair to say, well, can you tell me about a difficult negotiation you had? Or can you talk about a negotiation? Obviously, they, they can't tell you specifics about who and how much and all of that, but they can, I mean, we all have stories of running a negotiation or negotiating with an editor that we love to share. And yeah. if we don't have stories about that, then. Mm. Yeah, though that question gives me like really bad first job interview PTSD flashbacks. <laughs> like, well, that's what tell me called. about a difficult situation and how you handled it. I mean, I don't know. Did I ask you that? <laughs> huh? Did I ask you that? No, <laughs> no, you didn't. Well, maybe, maybe Beth did, I don't know. That well, was a long time ago. 
You had already worked a lot of difficult. I had already created a lot of difficult you situations. You have created situations. <laughs> you had created and then sat back and laughed while I worked through them. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'll do number five. So, okay. will when asked, will the agent give you a list of referrals or clients that you can talk to? Um, if an agent won't do this, you know. Um, I will say, I think there are agents you might not, you know, I have definitely worked with clients who didn't ask for referrals, but I think a lot of times they came having already spoken to my clients or knowing or knowing of, so that can be different. I don't think you always have to call other clients. However, I think it's a good idea. I always think it's a good idea. I advocate for it. I offer it even if they don't ask for it. Yeah. Always. However, I do think there are some situations where it might be a little harder. Like if an agent's breaking into a new genre, if an agent is just building their list, there are situations there, but can you look to talk to other agency clients? Yeah. And yeah. And ask, I, sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to say, and ask that agent how they communicate with their fellow agents. That's always a fair game question to ask. Well, and yeah. And I also think even if they're breaking into a new genre, their clients might not have specifics about the genre, but they know how the agent works. And the truth is, you know, how an agent works with, you know, a client of any genre should all be consistent. They should all have good communication. They should all negotiate the contracts. They should all make you feel like, you know, you have someone in your corner, no matter what. I agree. Um, but this way, you know, there are, there are workarounds to sort of get that information if right. the clients aren't there for you. Um, so these are our tips on knowing before signing whether an agent is reputable. But I think the sad truth is, as we've seen in certain situations, um, that doesn't always mean that the agent, the author agent relationship is going to work out. Or it doesn't always mean that while that agent is reputable and trustworthy now that they will always be. Yeah. That, I mean, unfortunately, that's just the basis. Life. Yeah, it's well, life. I, yeah. I think it's life, you know, it's, it's like you had this great doctor you loved and all of a sudden they weren't so great and you didn't love them anymore. Right. And, you know, they filled your, the dentist filled your cavity all wonky and now you can't stand the guy. That's all fair. That happens. So at the end of the day, the real reminder is don't sign a contract you can't get out of. And every agency contract has a pretty simple or should have a pretty simple termination clause. We're going to have a video on this soon. Oh, we there are. we go. You didn't know about that, and but we are. <laughs> I, I did not know about that, but now I do. So there should be a termination clause where you can get out of the contract. And you should know that you need to advocate for yourself. And if you find yourself in a situation where you're just not feeling good about your author agent relationship anymore, whether it's lack of communication, whether you've discovered the agent isn't reputable, whether horrible things happened on Twitter, you can get out. And that's what you should do. That's all I got. We are going to leave it there. Um, we hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to put them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we hope to see you back here next time. Bye.